conversation is not going uh, in in the way that you'd hope. All right. Just walk away. All right. Okay, I'll give you the mic back too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's quite expensive. <laughs> sure it is. So you said your name is Michael, yeah? That is correct. So my name is Zishan. Pleased to meet you. So we're here at Speakers Corner where we just talk about well, different people come, they talk about their theologies, what they believe in, right. why they believe in it. Yeah. So you said you're an agnostic. Yes. Um, I, and clearly, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you're open to the concept of God. Yes. You just don't know who that God is and you're open to the evidence that's presented to you. You could say that. Yeah, that's fine. Fantastic. So, uh, Michael, if we were to do a thought experiment, very short, simple short, uh, thought experiment, and I was to ask you a simple question, that for you to leave the park today, having belief in God, what criteria would you need to have been ticked off? Like, when you say evidence, what sort of evidence are you looking for? Is it empirical evidence? Is it experiential? Is it testimony evidence? What sort of evidence? And uh, yeah, let's well, just can, start with I that. I can immediately say testimony wouldn't help because a lot of people have testimonies of their own religion that by prayer, God has told them their religion is true which if you believe God is not lying, this is impossible. So I, I personally don't put a lot of, I don't consider testimonies evidence. If God appeared to me and told me he was real in some way and it wasn't a magic trick, I would probably believe that. Um, okay, so number one, uh, appearing to you, God appearing to yeah, you. If that happened, I would, okay. I would call that evidence. Okay. I don't think that's going to happen in the park today. What else? Try to exhaust that list so we got something to work with. Um, I don't know. I, I got. I cannot think of something. Okay, so you, you're saying God coming to you. So that's something that came into your head. So when you say evidence, and you're saying you're looking for evidence of God, what is that evidence looking like? Um, it, uh, am I correct to assume it's empirical, something that can be measured under a yeah, microscope, some, checked? Some, yeah, something that could be measured or checked. Okay, fantastic. You said you're a faculty member. Uh, for what department? So Economics. I can give you... Okay, okay, fantastic. I thought if it's science, then I'd have to go a bit technical with you, but but that's fine. It's okay. okay. That's fine, okay. Yeah. So when it comes to evidence, you said primary, primarily the evidence is God speaking to you. How would you know that that is indeed God speaking to you and not some sort of hologram yeah, that's been know. crafted really yeah, well? That, that's a great point. I don't know. I'd have to have some way to verify that there was no hologram going on. How would you verify that? Um, I don't know. So when you so when you say the, the reason why I put this forward was you said so so God appearing to me. Yeah. The the reason why I would say to you Michael is let's build on this criteria. Okay. Because with this current criteria it's never gonna happen. Uh, not that it won't happen. <laughs> I can argue it can happen. Okay, sure. But but it can be, it can happen with a nefarious force ah, that can use deception. Yeah, deception okay. to deceive you. Like we, we believe, yeah. and so do the Christians as well. That there will be an individual called the Antichrist who will come and claim to have godly powers, and he'll be able to perform miracles. Right. So, performing of miracles uh, shouldn't necessarily be the only criteria, yeah. or or seeing something supernatural. For okay. example, if I said to you. Um, yeah, not, not in my face here. Yeah. <laughs> Way too many microphones here for me. You, you know what it is? It's just different cameras, different I, I channels. Got it, got it. But everyone's All just right. trying to do their own cool. thing. So, but again, just to kind of preface it, I, I'm not here to convince you. I'm sure. not here for a gotcha moment. All right. All right. If, you, uh, if you got me, it's, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I appreciate that. All but right. but again, mate, my, my thing, it, it transcends all this. Okay. It's, um, it's, the, it's the whole reason that I'm here, which is I genuinely believe in God. I believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the final messenger. Uh, I, I will present to you my definition of God and okay. see what you think. All right. And I'll give you adequate time and it will right, be yeah. more of a conversation rather than me speaking at you. Sure. And I hope you kind of enjoy this and it's, you learn something from it and I learn something from it as well. Yeah. So, Michael, what I was saying is with, when it comes to the Antichrist, we believe that he can come and he will claim to be God and he will be able to show things that might be able to fulfill your criteria. And however, some people are even of the opinion that hologram technology has reached such a level yeah. that, I mean, some people are saying that even, although it's being regarded as conspiracy, but some people are saying that certain things have actually been hologram events. 
and that's up to them to kind of discuss and debate that. So what, what I would argue, what I would say is, before I even get to that, here's the Islamic stance, here's my stance of God, and let me know what you think about this, and right. I'd love for you to challenge it, yeah? All right. So as a Muslim, I believe there's a four-pronged uh, kind of criteria of God, uh -huh. the one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the independent, does not beget, nor is he begotten, All right. and there's none like him. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at the uh, creator, as a Muslim, that's our definition of God. What do you think about what I've just said so far? I, I, that's perfectly fine if that's what God is. I'm not opposed to that being the truth. Okay. In terms of criteria of God, what about if somebody said God is a tree? God is a tree. That just sounds weird to me. Okay, great. If somebody said, oh, God is that guy over there that's sitting under the tree? Uh, I would be very, very skeptical. Okay, fantastic. So I was just checking that yeah. the definition that I've given you, it resonates with your innate disposition. Like it, sure. nothing kind of sticks out of the ordinary. Yeah, yeah. Okay. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, philosophically, do you accept that there is a necessary being? No. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's start with there, Michael. All right. So in terms of us as human beings, uh, would you say that we are dependent or independent? I mean, we're dependent on each other. We're dependent on the sun. So in that sense, we depend on other people to survive and Fantastic. other things to survive. Fantastic. Yeah. So we depend on something. That thing depends on something. That thing depends on something. If it, the sun eventually. Exactly, and that depends on something that will relies on hydrogen and helium and yeah. that requires yeah. nuclear yeah. fission and blah blah blah. Yeah. So it keeps going on and on and on and on. I, I would argue, and so have philosophers, uh, at the first step would be, because we're dealing with philosophy here, yeah? So philosophically, if we look at dependencies yeah. and we keep going on, philosophically there has to be an end to that chain of dependencies which philosophically is called a necessary being. And the, a, a simple analogy that I can put forward for that is, if I am to throw a ball, yeah. Yeah, and I have to ask this person's permission, he has to ask this person's permission, and if it goes on for infinity, asking permissions, would I ever get to throw the ball? Well, maybe you don't need to ask permission to throw a ball. I feel like that's a weird analogy. Yeah, but if I required permission, yeah. Let's just say I came up with a better analogy, but it, this was a simple analogy. A child that requires permission to, I don't know, uh, eat the cookies so, or okay, any analogy. I, I, I Do you see? Your, I understand your point. So, like, a, an atheist might respond and say, well, there but are... Just, just before that, just oh, before oh, that, oh, okay. just so I can yeah, finish right, it. Yeah. Uh, d so, if it goes on for infinity, would I ever get to throw the ball? I guess, no, you would not. That's so, the, yeah, so there has to be an end to that chain for me to throw the ball. Go ahead. Oh, well, I guess... Uh, an atheist, which I'm not, would say there's just innate laws of physics that just have existed and that's the end final point. Right, but but when you're talking about a final point, a final point of what though? What came before the final point? Thing. Okay. You have to ask permission of laws of physics, can I do this? And right, right. Just... Right. So this is an analogy for dependencies. So yeah. in order to make that argument, one would have to concede that there can be an infinite regress. There is such a thing as infinite regress. Okay, sure. Do you see? Whatever. Which is... No, 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 no. Okay. So, so here's the thing, Michael. I'm, I'm not here to kind of put forward an argument if it's not settling well with you. I'd rather you pushed back you're, you're, and we just stood are, by that. You are, you are claiming that there needs to be some initial source for the universe effectively what, what i'm saying is that there's no such thing as infinite regress so if we are dependent things and dependency goes on forever it would be an absurdity because just like i wouldn't be able to throw a ball we, you and i wouldn't be able to exist what if the dependency is a circle and eventually it comes back to you and you're able to give yourself permission right so the thing with that is it's like a mother giving birth to a child yeah which is circularity, which is irrational. Yeah, well, obviously, mother giving birth to the child analogy doesn't fit this. But well, asking permission to throw a ball, I think like, you could do that. Right, so if we then stick with this yeah. specific analogy, it would be, uh, uh, we're talking in terms of dependencies, right? I, 
Yes. Okay, so in terms, <laughs> so in terms of the, because I was, I thought you went back to the ball one. Oh sure. That's yeah. why I wanted to make okay. sure. Yeah. So in terms of the dependencies, um, so, so the dependency or the cause would be the effect of its of the thing that gave it cause. Do you see? Your your point is there cannot be an infinite regress in a, or a loop. It needs to go to a finite point where the permission is granted. I, I'm saying that circularity Can't is, yeah, it doesn't okay. work. And I'm also arguing, which you can push back at, I'd, lo I'd love that. So linear-wise, it doesn't work either. Okay. So I, I want to hear why you would think it works, uh, and then I, then, then I can respond to that. Uh, I mean, in terms of the permission thing, I can understand why this does not work. Yeah, so I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah. So think of it similarly in terms of dependencies as well. Sure. If everything depended on something that depended on something that yeah. depended on something. Forever. Yeah, do you see? Yeah. For yeah. us being here, yeah. it's, it's something it's, had to start it. Yeah. Which in philosophy they call the necessary necessary existence. Sure. Yeah, which is something yeah. accepted by Aristotle, yeah. Leibniz, Kant, yeah. and the likes. What do you think about this so far? Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is the, pretty much the starting point of even Western philosophy, that they don't necessarily have an, have an issue with a necessary being. They have an issue with a necessary being being God. That's, okay. that's where the yeah. issue comes in. Sure. Yeah, which is probably yeah. where you'll be able to relate more. Okay. Now, now, what do you think about when I say that this necessary existence is independent? Uh, as in, this necessary thing does not, it's just like an innate thing that exists on its own, that's fine? Yeah. Okay. What, what about if this necessary existence has power? An immeasurable amount of power. Well, so that, this gets more into where I said, what if it's just laws of physics that just exist permanently? Okay. Because maybe they don't have power, they're just laws that exist. Right, but, but bear in mind, there's something called the fallacy of reification. Okay. Yeah, laws are, cr uh, are prescriptive and descriptive. Laws don't create things. For example, for example, the law of arithmetic. Yeah? The law of arithmetic can tell me how much money there are in my, there is in my bank account, yeah. but the law of arithmetic cannot create the money in the first place. The law of motion. You're more than welcome to jump in if you want. Sorry. You're more than welcome to jump in with that if you've got. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so the law of motion is not something that moves the billiards ball. Um, the law of motion describes the movement of the ball. Rather, it is the, the person with holding the cue, the one causing the ball to move. The law of motion describes the movement. So laws are descriptive, they are not creative. Sure. So, so when... So, so, what if, what if so the fallacy of reification, just to kind of um, complete that point, fallacy of reification is when you give something that's abstract, concrete properties. So when they say, for example, chance created this, forces created this so attributing creative power to forces is what i was just emphasizing there go ahead okay so well um laws of physics like you know gravity relativity have influenced a lot of the motion and like we talked about the sun and i feel like correct me if i'm wrong what you're saying is there must be something else that set it all in motion to begin with is that correct uh yeah forces require something um, to, to direct them because forces are unconscious, they are blind, um, they are abstract. Yeah. So to, to say that a force has created something like a, a fully... Like a big bang or something. Yeah, like the, like the Big Bang or even planet Earth. Yeah. If we just attribute so, that to like Stephen Hawking said to um, gravity, yeah. he says in his book The Grand Designer uh, or The Grand Design, um, that gravity created everything. But to say that the gravity itself is creating, like you've got the river, the, the mountains, the trees, etc. Yeah. So uh, to that I would say, okay, appealing to laws of physics, still sticking with this. There's either some other laws of physics we don't know yet, or there is some other thing that set it in motion. I can accept that. But then I would come back to the philosophical argument. Yeah. Is that thing itself, because philosophically, um, dependency and independency, if you want to look 
technically, because it's recorded, when you get a chance, when you go back home and you're like, what did this bearded guy tell me? You know, is he just waffling? Right. So what I want to say is stuff that you can maybe refer back to as well. Sure. So although I used simplistic words like dependent and independent, yeah. that's known as the contingency argument. And the technical terms are contingent and necessary. That's why I said that the end of that chain is a necessary existence or the necessary being. Yeah. So the, the definition of something that's contingent is something that is made of parts um, because th think about it Michael if something's made out of parts and you take that part out then that thing is dependent upon the part isn't it so it, it breaks down yeah so it's, it's it's not independent so contingent I'm using contingent and dependent interchangeably yeah so so it's cons it's made of parts it can cease to exist and it can't be any other way something that's necessary is it's not consistent of parts can't be any other way and it can't cease to exist so uh, coming back to your energy thing if you come back to the energy thing is energy composed of parts of course energy is composed of parts can energy be any other way can be any other way can energy cease to exist it can cease to exist so it doesn't fulfill the criteria of uh, because think about it I mean the law of thermodynamics or uh, or, Wait, or the what second no. law of thermodynamics that the net change in entropy is always positive is that what you're referring to? Not necessarily in, in the sense that when people talk about energy uh, energy being removed in one aspect but then coming in another converted. form yeah yeah it's, it's, it's converted but that again is within the, the paradigm of the world as we know it since yeah. the Big Bang the time and space etc etc sure. so with p pertaining to that if we look at the definition of necessity not being composed of parts, can't be any other way, and cannot cease to exist. It cannot be uh, energy. And when we're looking at independent, energy isn't necessarily independent. It's reliant upon something else as well, isn't it? Uh, yes. So coming back to the power thing, power by definition, you get from that which you come from. Yeah? So if, if something creates something, that thing relies on it, for power that's okay. that's the nature of power All so right. if we then go in this infinite regress would it make sense to you with what I've said that this necessary existence also makes sense for it to have power as well uh, sure it has power okay so it has power it has independence yeah would you say it has intelligence maybe okay now I would make the argument for intelligence yeah Okay. And then let me know if it. that's convincing yeah. to you because right. uh, the DNA, our yeah? DNA, our DNA. All right. or DNA even in general as well, sure. of, uh, of, of living beings. Are your hands cold? I have poor blood circulation, I'm fine. Okay, you can, you're more I'm than good. welcome I'm to... Your, take your, uh, no, I'll listen to your talk. Okay, yeah. but if you need gloves, just ask me. I you can use Okay, because I want you to be comfortable. Thank you. Um, I'm listening. That's fine. So, so the last thing, huh, intelligence. So, DNA has a great deal of information. Yeah. Um, now the argument would be, <laughs> where, where has this information come from? An analogy that I would like to use for this would be a dictionary. Yeah? That yeah. Di a dictionary has a great deal of information. Can you give me an example of something that has a great deal of information that has come from something non-intelligent? Great deal of information from something non-intelligent. Which is what we're claiming of our DNA. That, that's the link. Well, I, I can think of smart aleck answers of some dumb people saying things, but um, uh, no. But I'm, I'm speaking to Michael, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah. so bearing that in mind, Michael, I would argue that considering the amount of information that's present in our DNA, and you, you know, this is biology from like A level, adenine, thymine, guatinine, and you know, ATGC, you know, the DNA sequences and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then how that's used to make genes, makes chromosomes. So this is something that I was looking into as well, because I thought if, if I come across somebody like Michael and I, and I have to tell them that, look, I have to prove to them that this necessary existence has intelligence, sure. what would I say to Michael? And one, and one of the things, that, that, that was an example, but one of the things I would say is uh, objective and mathematical, you're economist, yeah? A little bit. Okay, so a bit of math. So mathematically, 
Um, and objectively, there are things of design in creation. And I would argue, and hopefully you would agree as well, that when a person sees design, that points towards an intelligence. Typically, yeah. So when you look at, say, the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, the golden yeah. spiral, yeah. even symmetry in nature like the butterflies, um, and even when you take like the, um, the, the, the golden spiral and the golden ratio, that's, we see this in uh, sunflower seeds, we use this, uh, we, we see them in like leaves on yeah. stems as well. So the complexity and the design in nature is something that I, I would argue can be objectively and mathematically measured. Sure. Make sense? Yeah. So if there is design, uh, it makes sense that it comes from an intelligent source, hence the necessary being, it makes sense for us to claim that he's intelligent or it's intelligent. Whatever this initiating source yeah. is has intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. And would you agree and would you accept now that it also has wisdom? I need you to define wisdom. Okay. So. Wisdom is applying the correct information in the correct capacity and at the right time. For example, for, I'll give you an example. I, I teach my son that, look, disabled people are in wheelchairs and, you know, we should be kind to them, etc., etc. And um, my son, he sees a person in a wheelchair and then he goes, hey, you're disabled. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's not wise. That's, that's not a wise statement to make. So I would say to him, but he's like, but dad, so he's got intelligence. He's absorbed the information. But what he's doing with that is he's not being wise because he's not applying the intelligence in the right place. So it's like decision making. This is your making. This is your making. So the question is, this intelligent initial source, is there intelligent or is there like wise decision making? Yeah, so I'm saying... design of the application of the intelligence. Very good, yeah. Is that the idea? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say it does not necessarily need to be that way. Okay. The reason... You have to convince me. Go ahead. Okay. So if, if we look at, for example, the intricate way in which... The, the, the ecosystem is on this yeah, planet. Yeah. When we look at, um, I'm having to go back to uh, go A, A level biology it. now, um, your food webs, remember food webs? Yeah. That this organism depends on this, yeah. that depends on this, that depends on this. So that shows that these organisms being dependent and then when you take one organism out yeah. of the ecosystem, then the other one grows and then it becomes chaos. So in other words, things have been put in their right places. For example, our hair would grow, our eyebrows would not grow, otherwise we'd have to go to the barbers, you know, every... Yeah, it would be really annoying if our brain was on our hands, you know, if our heart was on our backside, we wouldn't be able to sit down. So the way things have been proportioned, the things, like Einstein said, the fact that this world is even comprehensible raises questions as to the one that's brought it into existence. I'm kind of doing, um, adding a bit of detail to Einstein, I'm not saying he's saying all of this. Einstein's clear statement was the fact that we can even comprehend this world is, you know, something worth thinking about. Yeah. You're going to say something? Uh, I'll hold it. Okay, so the reason why I would say he's wise is because creating everything with intricacy, with precision, with order, that requires wisdom. Yeah. But was everything made with precision and wisdom? I, I would. A lot of things. Yeah, I, I would argue so. And the reason being, uh, because the, the argument that some people would, would claim was, oh, this thing, like, I'll give you an example. Yeah, a lot of things don't work out on Earth. That, that we know of. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. Like, when I was doing biology A level, uh, we came across a term called junk DNA. Junk DNA? Junk DNA, yeah. yeah. So it was DNA that did nothing. well we we said it didn't do anything but now um, the more we know about genetics we've discovered that that actually switches on and off genes and then they've now retracted that term as well of junk dna the yeah. appendix yeah. that was seen as something it stupid something. <laughs> exactly yeah. so yeah. it's it's argument from ignorance um, and because we're 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 limited beings what we do is we base anything that we come across in science 
based on induction. So induction is based on our limited observation, yeah. which is constantly subject to, to change. So we can't necessarily say that, oh, because we don't know what X thing does, therefore it doesn't, um, th therefore there's no, yeah, there's no wisdom behind it. Okay, so... So I would say in order to be intelligent, wisdom follows. Because just being intelligent without wisdom is pretty pointless. Right, but it's not impossible. Can you give me? Can it's, it's not impossible. Like but suppose there's some all-knowing, all-powerful God who just does random stuff. <laughs> How do we know he didn't just say, "Oh, like let's make Earth and let's design the human body in this wonderful way without the heart on the hands or whatever you said, and design this all wonderfully, and then I'm just gonna go do random stuff elsewhere just because I can." Like, there's a big universe out there with ostensibly nothing. So, I'm going to answer what an Oxford professor answered once. Uh, so, when this question was somewhat posed to him, he said three points. He said the fact that there is uniformity. Um, there were three things he said. Uniformity, regularity and stability. Yeah. yeah. And the example that he used was the mere fact that I can hold my glove out. Yeah. And my glove is not floating away. It's not randomly combusting. It's not just being sucked into the Earth's gravity. Indicates that there is a level of consistency. There is a, a, leg, a level of uniformity, regularity and stability in nature for us to even do science. So for us to say, uh, so I guess that would be a response to your thing that if things were random, then we wouldn't even be able to do well, science. I did not say everything was random. I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that there's enough in our universe for us to live our daily life, enjoy I, our life. I yeah. can agree with all of this, but I'm just saying that to me does not prove that God or this initial source is wise and doing everything with wisdom. It just mm -hmm. means this earth was created with wisdom. Right. right? So, so you accept that he would use wisdom to create earth? Well, maybe. Maybe there's still something on earth we haven't discovered yet that was not created with wisdom. I'm just saying, like, this to me is not a proof of its accuracy, is it? it? What you're saying is consistent with a God who is wise, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not convincing me that it must be that way. Okay, but, so, so that's fine, we can come back to that. Sure. But is it, are you saying that there's any issue with it being wise? I do not have a problem, if there is a wise God, that is totally cool. I'm down with that. No, would it, would it make sense to you, the fact that it's intelligent, powerful, independent, would it be inconceivable for you to consider it as wise? No, I'm poor, I, I have, it's definitely conceivable. I'm just saying I'm agnostic for a reason, which is I have not proven this. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. So, wisdom is the thing that, that you're saying is Well, you've, the you've issue. done a pretty good job on most of the others in wisdom, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So, wisdom is the thing that's so far. the obstacle at the moment, yeah? yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's break down wisdom a little bit then. So, if we're looking... Uh, do you want to ask if she's okay because she's your mother? I don't want to keep uh, her in the cold. Yeah, let me know. Are you okay? Yeah. Because I said, are you okay? What, what, yeah, yeah. When you guys need to leave, uh, just let us know. I don't want to hold you. We're good, right? All right. Okay, yeah, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Because if my mom was here, you know what I mean. <laughs> Seeing you reminds me of my own mom. Uh, we're talking about wisdom. So we believe there is, or we've talked about there being humans dependent on each other, that if there is some God, that God is independent, is intelligent. Uh, did I miss one? I I missed yeah, one. so independent, powerful. powerful. Uh, did we talk about powerful? Power, power. Oh, uh, we did talk about, did we say all powerful or just powerful? Just power. Just power. Immeasurable. He has he immeasurable has power. power, yeah. Independent, power, intelligent, and we're on wisdom now. So, so, so wisdom would be putting things yeah. in their right place. Sure. Yeah. So, I think when we when we look at the way design is, mm -hmm. just look at the human body. Yeah, we got the human body. Yeah. Inside it are organs, 
Yeah. Inside the organs, we have tissues. Inside the tissues, we have cells. Okay. Inside the cells, we have organelles. Yeah. Inside the organelles, we have gene chromosomes. No, I, I can agree. It's incredibly detailed. And so, so that's what I'm saying. Putting things in the right place. Uh, I, I guess I'd already covered this before, but I just wanted to double check the mere presence of food webs and how they are intricately related, even as uh, organism, even something as small as an atom. When you look at the way the nucleus is the protons and the neutrons and the electrons, then you've got the leptons and the bosons. And when you look at the way all of these things have been put in the right place for life to exist, for life to be present, that indicates wisdom. Because wisdom is putting things in the right place. If things were not in their right place, then that argument could have been made that, you know what, things aren't in their right place, things are all over the place, things are chaotic. If you know, one one minute the queen pops up there, the next, so, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So, let this pass, then I'll respond. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So is it? Have you guys been Winter Wonderland? I've heard mixed reviews about it.